Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Anton, and welcome to today's video for Honkai Star Rail. What are we going to be doing today? Um, well, we're going to be going through Luocha in a very basic manner, in all honesty. Uh, and we're going to be uh, talking about whether or not you should roll for him or you should perhaps pass for him. Um, did a video for this for Silver Wolf. Uh, I think I did a pretty decent job. Uh, I'm going to be trying a little bit different stuff here. Um, I've added a pros and cons list here. I'm going to go through all of his abilities, you know, his basic, his technique, talent, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and we're going to talk about a little more in depth of Luocha and whether or not I think Luocha is worth it. Uh, for the people who just want a quick answer and just want the, hey, streamer, I don't care about all that stuff. Should I roll for Luocha? Probably yes. I have a hard time saying just yes because I feel like there is a lot to discuss on whether you should or should not roll for Luocha. If you want my personal decision, what I am going to do, I'm actually going to skip Luocha. Um, I'll probably talk about that a little bit more into the video about why I'm skipping Luocha. The reason is not because I have Bailu or Japard. I'm just skipping Luocha for other reasons. Um, so. Enough of an intro. Uh, this is basically meant for the people who are a little on the fence uh, for Luocha. They're just not sure. They really just want someone to help sway them one way or the other. Let's start talking about his skill set. So, first off, not much to talk about here. We just have his basic attack. Um, pretty standard basic attack. Doesn't do anything but does damage. Uh, the only notable thing here is that it does some imaginary damage, which is something of note. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about imaginary damage and the imaginary element when we're talking about the pros and cons. But yeah, not much to talk about here, so we're just gonna go and like zoom through that. Next up, we got his technique. Um, I like his technique. Uh, we're gonna have to talk a little bit about his talent because his technique is related to his talent. We'll talk about that next. Uh, but yeah, very basic technique here to understand. Use the technique and then his talent will be triggered right away at the start of the next battle. But what is it, the talent, you might say? Well, we got it right here. Uh, a lot to take in here. So we'll start slowly. First off, Locha has this, I guess you could call it mechanic, this, um, this resource, if you will, called the Abyss Flower. Uh, he generates Abyss Flowers through uh, numerous ways, uh, but this is what his talent is doing. When he gets two Abyss Flowers, basically it's two sacks of Abyss Flowers, he uses them all and he deploys a field against the enemy. Now, while this field is active, if your units attack, or sorry, let me rephrase that. I'm getting all tongue tied here. If the field is active and your units attack the enemies, they will heal um, a set amount depending on, well, as you can see here, um, the scaling, of course, leather, uh, which is also going to be scaling on his attack and the just flat out heal as well. So uh, very nice heal. Um, this is one of the strengths, in my opinion, of Luocha, letting you, giving you some healing without actually having to use some skill points. So uh, you can actually run some more skill point heavy lineups. Uh, next up, we have his actual skill. Um, in all honesty, there's a lot to take in effect here, but at its base, it is basically just a heal. Um, it does give him a stack of Abyss Flower too, which is really nice. So you can actually get his talent up and get the field back on. Um, so yeah, pretty solid. And he had, has like a an emergency heal, I guess is the best way to call it. Uh, when an ally has their HP drop below a certain percent, 50%, um, he will basically use this skill on them immediately. Uh, so that's kind of nice in that you can, if you don't think your opponent can nuke your allies that hard, you can let them just, you know, take a little bit of chip damage, slowly get whittled down and have his uh, passive, his um, passive heal go off because it will not use a skill point, which is uh, pretty nice. Um, of course, it can only be used... Uh, it has a two turn cooldown, so it can't be used all the time. You can't just rely on it, but it is a, it's a nice like, oh shit kind of button, which, uh, you know, is a very nice thing to have on healers. And finally we got his ult. Um, his ult is, there's a lot to talk about with his ult. Um, first off, doesn't really do healing. Like that's kind of a, honestly a little bit 
I won't say rare because there aren't that many healers, but it's uh I don't know if it's less than ideal, but it's it's not what I expected from a healer. When you play a healer, when I see a healer character, I'm expecting their ult to be like, oh yeah, it's gonna maybe heal you, maybe give you like a defensive buff or something, or maybe even an offensive buff. It doesn't do any of that, it doesn't heal. Uh instead it just does AoE damage. Which is not bad because he does scale with AoE, so you, you can kind of call Luocha like a healer who puts out a little bit of damage thanks to his ult. Um, I feel like though, because of the the debuff removal, or sorry, the debuff, the buff removal that it gives, because it does remove, every time you do it, it will remove a buff from all of the enemies. I feel like a lot of the time you're going to save his ult to remove a very critical buff from an enemy. And of course it gives him a stack of Abyss Flower too, which is very, very nice. Um, I don't think I mentioned this too, but um, the cleanse, he does have a cleanse as well. I didn't really mention it, but I believe the cleanse is one of his traces. So he won't have it right away, but once you start building Luolcha, you'll of course get his traces and he will have a cleanse. So in case you're worried about him not having a cleanse, after looking through his skill set, his moveset, whatever you want to call it, his abilities. Don't worry, he does have a cleanse. Uh, you just have to activate a trace for it, and then his skill will cleanse just like Natasha's. Um, so yeah, that is basically Luolcha. Overall, kind of exactly what you'd like in a healer. Um, no revive like a Bailu, so that's kind of whatever. No like burst speed or, I don't know, no big AoE heal like a Natasha ult or anything, so... It's, I like that. I like that it means that no one healer seems better than the other. It seems like for now, at least, I doubt this will be uh, the status quo as long as we get more healers. But for now, it seems like each healer is just, they're doing their own thing. They're all just healing at the end of the day, but they're all like doing one thing that the others are not doing or they're doing it better than the others. Like Natasha has her ult to, you know, that's her oh shit, and she gives like her oh shit button, and it gives like really good burst AoE healing. Bailu has that revive plus other stuff. Um, Bailu doesn't have a cleanse though, which kind of sucks, while Natasha and Luocha have cleanses. Um, next up, let's talk about the pros and cons. Um, I created this little graphic here because I kind of like the uh, idea of going through pros and cons. Helps me uh, personally, it helps me uh, talk about reasons why I think you should or should not roll for a character. So let's start with the pros. First pro of Luocha, and honestly, I feel like this is the main reason a lot of people are going to roll for him, or at least considering rolling for him. He's a healer. Yes, you might say, well, streamer, yeah, no shit, right? He's a healer, whatever. So what? Well, there's very few in the game. Uh, and before you say, if you're newer to Honkai and you haven't played Genshin, so you don't really know MiHoYo games that well, you need two healers. Technically, you can get away with one as long as you have another character who can help sustain and sustain really well. Basically, Japard is the only one. Maybe like Fire MC or March can try their best. But you do need two teams. For some endgame content, basically MOC, you will need two teams. You will, and you will want a healer or I guess a sustainer on both teams. Yes, we all get Natasha for free but you do want the second one. And right now the options are very few. Basically, it's literally just Bailu for another healer, Japard, and hope whatever the content is doesn't just shred through shields. Um, and then you can try Fire MC or March, but while people have completed like end game content with Fire MC and March, no Japard, uh, no healer in their second team, it's very, very tough. Luolcha is going to make your uh, end game grind, end game content much comfier. Next pro we got though, uh, he has a cleanse. Uh, I talked about this a little bit, but yeah, he has a cleanse. Uh, cleanses are just very nice. If you've been playing Natasha, you just know how nice it is just to be able to cleanse your stuff. You know, opponent puts on a debuff and you're like, ooh, I don't like that debuff on my guy. Uh, it's kind of messing with them, making it hard for them to actually do damage. It's going to like hurt them a bit. Use the cleanse. Um, next up, I don't really know how to, like, describe this. I don't know if it has a proper term. Um, I've heard people call it, like, a strip. I've heard people just say it's a debuff. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a debuff. Um, uh, but he removes enemy buffs with his ult. 
I think that's really, really good. Um, we do have that kind of ability in game now, I believe. Um, I might be wrong on this. Please don't sue me if I'm wrong. Uh, but I'm pretty sure Pella can uh, do that as well. But Pella can't heal. Pella is just removing... I mean, she does more, but she removes enemy buffs as well. So it is kind of nice that this healer character is also removing enemy buffs and has a clan. He's just doing a lot. So uh, pretty solid character. Next up, we still got more pros. Uh, passive healing. Um, his technique, his field, whatever you want to call it. I believe it is his, not his technique, sorry, his uh, talent. Uh, and using his abyss flowers to create that field gives you some passive healing. Um, don't, I mean, sure, you do have to attack. I will admit that. You do, your units will have to attack, and some units would rather not attack. They'd rather buff, like, say, a uh, Ting Yun or something. Uh, but it is nice that he doesn't have to use his skill points to give heals, unlike, say, Natasha. Natasha wants to heal. She has to use her skill point, or I guess her ult, at the very least. So, this is great because it lets him go skill point positive, or at least, uh, skill point neutral helps manage teams this is great for very skill uh skill point hungry teams uh you know characters that just want to be using their skill every turn or characters that maybe will use a skill multiple times in a turn basically xing shui uh so yeah really like that next up imaginary damage i mentioned this a little bit earlier uh there's very little imaginary damage in the game right now uh until luocha came out uh, there was literally only one guy who did imaginary damage, and that was, well, Mr. Yang. Uh, Luocha came out, and he also came out with another imaginary character in the form of Yukong. So now there are three imaginary characters. Actually, you can build an imaginary team now. Pseudo-mono imaginary team. Welp, Luocha, Yukong, Silverwolf. I actually think that team's pretty good, too. Might talk about that in a future video. Um, but why is imaginary damage so good? Why is this worthy of being listed as a pro. And that's because of the imaginary weakness break. Imaginary weakness break is so crazy. Like, all weakness breaks delay enemy actions. Yes, we all know that by now, you know, whether it's wind, fire, physical, etc., etc. But there are three, I'd say, three elements that delay it more than normal, and that is imaginary, quantum, and ice. And I'd say, in my personal opinion, Imaginary is king for delaying the enemy. Um, it trades that off by not really giving damage. So, you know, that kind of sucks. But theoretically, the time you're gaining by delaying your enemy's actions gives you more time to pour in damage to make up for, like, the lack of damage on, like, say, a uh, Quantum Break or something. Uh, so yeah, I really like it. Plus, it reduces the enemy's speed, not just, uh, delaying their action. Reducing their speed is pretty nice, too, if you... Even if you don't pair it up, but if you pair up your Luolcha, your imaginary characters, with speed boosters like Asta. So yeah, imaginary damage, good damage. And our final pro for Luolcha, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm, a, I'm cheating a little bit here. Uh, he does give shields. Now... He does have to be E2, Eidolon 2, for his shields. Uh, I'm going to be paraphrasing here because I can't remember it off the top of my head. But um, if you have an E2 Luocha and he uses his skill and the ally has, I think it's less than 50 HP, he, first off, he gets he heals even more. Um... But if they have over 50 HP, they get a shield. And that shield, I think the amount of damage the shield can absorb is based on Luocha's attack. Again, I apologize if I'm wrong, um, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Uh, so that's like, that is a pro. Because um, I know some people do want to have shields with Luocha. Uh, and if you are feeling like wailing, I would say whale to e2 like e2 if i were to whale for luocha i would personally whale to e2 luocha um next up though that is it for pros let's talk about the cons let's talk about like i'm hyping this guy up what are the what could possibly be anything bad for luocha though well first off he scales with attack we've mentioned this a lot already but you do have to realize the other healers bailu and natasha scale with hp as a consequence of that 
Ilu and Natasha are naturally tanky. Luocha, even when he's like maxed out, fully farmed, or not even fully farmed, let's not go crazy here, but let's say he's like, he's level 80, has a solid light cone, light cone's like level 82, he's got a okay relic set, not like min-maxed of course, because it takes forever to min-max relic sets, let's be honest with each other here. Uh, he is still going to be squishy, he's going to have like 5,000 health. I personally feel like Yes, you might say, well, that's fine. I'll just play like the Fire MC and the Fire MC will taunt the attacks. Okay. What do you do when the enemy you're against uses AoE and it doesn't matter if they're taunted or not because their attack will just hit everyone. And now your Luocha is like 90% of the way dead. Are you going to... You don't have an oh shit heal like Natasha. Yes, you have your field to try and help you out, but he doesn't burst heal. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but he doesn't have like a big zero to a hundred kind of heal. He's like, his healing is more of a, I wouldn't say slow, but it's more incremental, if that makes sense. So uh, I personally think this is not that bad of a con. I am kind of like pushing him down with this, but it's not that bad of a con. If for you, you feel like your Luocha is a little too squishy, you can obviously fix that. Uh, with light cones, if you want, I personally think that's the wrong way to go. I feel like your light cone should probably either just heal more, increase your outgoing healing, maybe even attack if you want to give him some extra damage. But artifacts, relics, sorry. Relics are really good. You just get like one HP percent relic and then you fix this problem or even a defense percent relic. Um, which of the relics would you choose? Uh, it's up to you, really. Like. I honestly think it doesn't really matter too much, but just as long as you get like one main stat HP percent or maybe even a couple of sub stat like HP percent or defense percent. And this con, kind of like not a problem at all. Sure, even with those, unless you like really, really build him like with a lot of HP or defense for some reason, which is a stupid idea. He's still going to be squishier than Natasha and Bailu, but you fix that squishiness and you fix that AoE nuke problem that I have mentioned. Now his next con. What do we have as his next con? Uh, talked about it a little bit. Weak burst healing. Yes, he has good healing and he doesn't need that many skill points. But let's say, again, go back to that scenario. You're against some kind of enemy and they use a big AoE and your team takes a lot of damage. You're in a little bit of trouble because if, first off, even if the field is active, your units still have to attack. And then let's say your Luocha gets his play. He can only heal one unit. You might say, oh, well, he has his passive too. He, doesn't he have that passive where he can activate his skill if his allies get below 50% health? Yeah, but that's only one character. You might lose a very key member of your team. Preferably, hopefully only a debuffer like a Pella or a buffer like a Yukong. But if you lose your DPS... Like, I don't know, maybe Jing or, I don't know, Zila or whoever your DPS, you're in a lot of trouble. Like, while Yan, or Yanqing, sorry, uh, I saw Blonde, I said Yanqing. While uh, Luolcha can do a little bit of damage, you really don't want him having to carry your team and do the damage. So, yes, it is a little bit weak, but you can fix that um, by not just, one, not letting your team uh, get that low. So you have to rely on burst healing. Number two, the other way you can fix it is pairing him with shielders. Um, the best shielder, I think, to be paired with Luocha would probably be Japard because he's just crazy good. Let's say you're not a whale or you just don't have Japard. Fire MC. Fire MC is, sol Fire MC is solid. Uh, March is even okay. Like, she's not the greatest when it comes to shielding and sustaining, but she's okay. So I think, I think this con is not a big con, but it is still a con. Next up. Talked about this with his ult, ult lacks healing. Kind of also plays into the previous one, previous con of a lack of burst healing. Yes, you are, his ult is meant for removing enemy buffs. It's meant for getting a little bit of imaginary breaks, but not having the healing on the ult does kind of suck. Cause a lot of, at least for Natasha, healing ults kind of are just the like, oh shit button. I just took a lot of AOE press that button and heal. Yes, his imaginary damage does let him slow down the enemy teams and let you get a few more heals, but 
it is something to consider when you are considering building up Luolcha and building his teams. Now the next con we got though, lack of offensive buffs. I even mentioned, now before you say, what's that say until you won? I'll talk about that. Um, he doesn't really have offensive buffs. Um, that's not much, that's, I'm gonna be honest with you, this isn't really a big issue. Um, Natasha's not really doing much, like Byler's not really doing much for offensive buffs, but I know some people are like, well, I want my healer to do everything. I want my healer to cleanse them. I want them to heal, I want them to revive. I'm sorry, but he doesn't have offensive buffs. Now it says until E1, that is because E1 Luocha has a passive ability that says when his field is active, the attack of his allies, I believe including himself, I'm not sure about that, will increase by 20%, I believe. I might be wrong on that. It might be only 10, but I believe it's 20%. Sue me if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, that's pretty good. A 20% increase for when his field is active, and I'm gonna be honest with you, if you play Luocha well, his field's gonna be active a lot. Uh, that's a pretty good uh, increase. So uh, yeah, if you are considering whaling, E1 is great. E2 is where I would aim for, but even E1 is a huge increase in damage for uh, Luocha teams. And our final con, resource management. I'm, a, I'm cheating here a little bit, but yes, that you do kind of have to like think to yourself, um, how am I using this Abyss Flower? Will I have enough Abyss Flowers to activate the field? Um, what if I don't use his like skill? What if I don't ult and I use his basic attack to go for a break? I won't have field. So you will have to think about that. You will have to think about actually managing the Abyss Flower to keep the field open, keep field on, whatever you want to call it. Unlike say Natasha, who's just like, oh, someone's hurt, I heal. Oh, a lot of people are hurt, I ult. No one's hurt, basic attack. So yes, complexity, I guess is the way you could call it. Complexity is definitely a con, um, but not a big con. So overall, like the pros, very, very strong for Luocha. Cons, not so strong. Me personally, I did say I wouldn't roll for Luocha, I'm gonna be honest with you, the only real reason for that is because I am saving for future characters. I'm saving for Kafka, Fu, and others. So my final verdict, you should roll for Luocha if you don't have Bailu or Japard. If you have Bailu or Japard, it gets a little more complicated. At that point, it comes down to, do you like Luocha? Yes? I mean, this is just general anyway. In general anyway, if you like Luocha, just roll for him. But if you have Bailu or Japard, you can most likely skip out on Luocha for a future character. Do you like easier endgame stuff? Roll for Luocha if you don't have Bailu or Japard. Um, but yeah, that's it. Um, those are the pros and cons if you for Luocha. Uh, basically, just roll for Luocha if you don't have a second sustainer. If you have a second sustainer, you could consider skipping him unless you want a really, really, really good healer, which is what Luocha is, like insanely good. Definitely, in my opinion, making a strong argument for being the best healer, even though he does some stuff worse than the other two healers in the game. Uh, but yeah, I would love to hear your opinions on Luolcha. Do you think Luolcha is a must roll for if you don't have Bailu or Jepard? Uh, also, if you do have Bailu or Japard, do you think Luolcha is still worthy of a roll? I personally don't. I personally think that if you have Bailu especially, you should probably skip Luolcha and save for other future characters, but maybe you think differently. I would love to hear your opinions down in the comments below. And if you guys just enjoyed the video, I'd love it if you could leave a like or a comment down below as well. It always helps me and it always helps out the channel. And if you guys want to keep up with the Honkai Star Rail, content you can always go and subscribe to the channel as well and if you guys also want to watch me play some honkai star rail you can go and check me out over on twitch at twitch.tv slash where i stream pretty much every single day but with that all said and done thank you all again once more for watching this video and talk to you guys in the next one uh bye